Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories, let's start to story. AITA for moving out after my flatmate's boyfriend moved in without asking? My flatmate messaged me the day before she got back from holiday, telling me that her boyfriend was going to live with us for two months while he looked for a job. He had moved overseas for work, and now that things hadn't worked out for him there, he was coming back. If things went south with his job search here, he might move in permanently with us. I was pissed. She didn't even ask me if I was okay with it, she just let me know it was happening with less than 24 hours notice. Like, we live in a small two-bedroom place, and I did not sign up to live with three people, especially a couple. That's a whole different vibe. So I told her straight up that I wasn't okay with this, and that it felt disrespectful to just spring this on me like it's no big deal. She apologized, saying she'd try her best to make sure I wouldn't be inconvenienced. I was like, cool, but he still needs to pay his share if he's gonna be living here, and also I'm not happy about this. I told her I wouldn't be around much anymore, and that our usual hangouts, like watching TV shows together, wouldn't be happening. I was pretty clear that I was gonna do my own thing in my room, or stay out of the house altogether. She agreed and said she'd talk to him about it. But when I got home from work that day, they were both there, acting like everything was fine. So, when we finally got a moment alone, I reiterated all the things I'd said earlier, and she once again agreed. She mentioned it's only for two months, hopefully. I asked if he was planning to stay permanently because if so, I would move out. I didn't want to be stuck in this limbo, where I have no idea what's happening. She said he wasn't planning to stay long term, and added that he's depressed because things didn't work out in the other country. She didn't want to pressure him or make him feel worse. I get that he's going through a tough time but I was still uncomfortable with the whole situation, and I told her as much. She agreed, but didn't do anything about it. At this point, I was feeling really stuck. I didn't want to blow up or say something hurtful out of frustration, but after thinking about it for a week, I decided enough was enough. I told her either he finds somewhere else to stay for those two months, or I'm moving out because I don't want to live in a situation that makes me uncomfortable. Now I feel kind of bad, like I'm putting her in a tough spot. It's clear she hasn't really talked to him about all of this, or if she has, they're just pretending everything's fine and ignoring my feelings. Plus, if he does move back overseas after two months, she's gonna be stuck with a lease she probably can't afford on her own. But at the same time, I don't want to live like this for two months, and then still have to find a new place at the end of it. We literally, just a changed the lease to my name a few weeks ago, because it used to be under his name, so yeah, I'm stuck on the lease too, which makes this whole thing even more annoying. I didn't sign up for living with her boyfriend. If he wants to stay for two months, fine, but I shouldn't be forced into it without a say. In the end, I was able to organize moving out. I gave her a month's notice, got myself off the lease, and found a new place. But, let me tell you, it's been incredibly uncomfortable. This all happened right before Christmas, so it was super awkward. I had another talk with her where I was more firm and she assured me that he'd leave for a week before coming back for a short time, then leave again for good. Well, guess what? That didn't happen. It was Christmas Eve, and I was at work while she was at home, cooking a Christmas dinner for the three of us. I felt horrible, because I was still mad that she lied again, but I couldn't be angry at her for trying to do something nice like making dinner. It felt fake, you know? My coworker told me I had to say something, though. So, I did. I came home and let her know that since her boyfriend never left, I'd be leaving instead. I didn't mean to ruin Christmas, but honestly, I couldn't deal with the situation anymore. She canceled the dinner and refused to talk to me when I got home. Later, she told me she had asked him to stay because she didn't want to be alone for the holidays. She was upset, saying no one considered her feelings, and she felt caught between me and her boyfriend. She even said I should have just talked to him directly instead of making her the middleman. But like, seriously? I'm supposed to tell her boyfriend to leave when it's her place too. It's not my job to manage their relationship. I vented to my best friend about everything, and now she doesn't want to be friends with my flatmate anymore because of how she treated me. I feel bad because I didn't mean to ruin their friendship. I didn't really consider that I could have just given her the 30-day notice instead of leaving myself. I just wanted out and moving seemed like the easiest option. I didn't want to move out. I actually enjoyed living with her before all this, but I couldn't keep ignoring the fact that it's my house too, and my feelings were being completely disregarded. So yeah, next week I'm moving out. 
It's bittersweet, but honestly I feel relieved. At least I won't have to deal with this anymore. Comment from a supporter. Why are you blaming yourself for your best friend, not wanting to be friends with your flatmate anymore? She's just standing up for you, which is what friends are supposed to do. You don't have to convince her to like someone who treated you like crap. OP, it's response. You know what? I never thought of it that way. I guess I just felt guilty because breaking up a friendship wasn't my intention when I was venting. But yeah, you're right. I need to stop feeling bad for standing up for myself. Supporter. It's nice that you're so caring, but I'm concerned that it's bordering on something unhealthy for you. You didn't do anything wrong. You should have said something, so you did. You have every right to vent to your best friend, so you did. It's not your responsibility to talk to her boyfriend about this, so you didn't. Any fallout is her fault. It's not like you posted on SM or went around trying to get people to hate her. Also, her feelings are hers to care about and manage. She was a bad roommate doing that to you, and whatever she feels about that is again, her fault. She needs to grow up. OP, I agree, it's actually something I'm trying really hard to work on. I think many people are probably like this, where they go along with what someone else wants because they don't want to cause a problem. That's how I felt anyway. But, I really wasn't okay, and even just speaking up and saying no was really uncomfortable especially when she agreed I was put in a bad situation and apologized. But nothing seemed to change. Or, she made promises, and then didn't follow through, I'm not sure if she was lying or if it was terrible communication. It's unfortunate things turned out this way, and I hate being in this house now, but I am glad to be leaving and really appreciate your kind words. Thankfully I'm out. But the issues with this person hasn't stopped. It's been two months and she's still a pest. After moving, she made up a dozen excuses not to return my bond. Didn't clean the room properly, but refused to let me come back to clean. It accused me of damages, tried to accuse me of stealing her tomatoes, accused me of being untrustworthy because she wasn't satisfied with the internet invoices I sent her and was convinced I never paid the bill. Keeping in mind this is in my name expected me to keep the internet on for her longer than when I left because she couldn't get it connected in her name I left some outdoor furniture with her as she had wanted to keep it she never paid me and uses it as another excuse to withhold more of my bond until I give her the invoice for it because I could have stolen it just using every excuse to not return my bond so I've had to lodge a dispute and take it to court but could take six months to resolve this route this isn't even all of it and it's just exhausting. Thanks for watching till the end, wishing you an awesome day, feel free to drop a comment if you got more to share.